Hello there, my fellow sappers and diggers, and welcome back to another Warhammer 40k lore video. Some time ago, I did make a rather brief return to the Imperial Guard vehicle series, and talked about the Deathstrike missile launcher. Now, this episode is not gonna be about that thing, but the question that I asked you at the end of that video. If you would like to see an episode on Imperial Subterranean slash Burrowing Vehicles. Your overwhelming answer, in case anyone was curious, was a definite yes. So it did take me a while to get here, but here I am nevertheless, with some knowledge on Imperial Subterranean Vehicles. One note I would like to make is that there are gonna be a few references to the squats in this video. Now, while the vehicles are canon, their association with the squads is something you can decide for yourself. Before I begin properly though, I would also like to take a few seconds and once again give a bump to a friend of my channel. His name is Sleepy Sack, and he also makes Warhammer 40k lore videos. He doesn't have a huge amount of them yet, but what is there is well made and of high quality and entertainment. There's also a few topics on his channel which I didn't even cover yet. So if you're tired of my voice, do feel free to check out Sleepy Sack. I will also leave a link to the channel in the description below. With that said, let us proceed, shall we? The Imperial Subterranean Vehicles are vehicles that move, who would have guessed it, underground. They are tunneling troop transports utilized by a variety of Imperial factions, and also collectively or colloquially known as tunnelers or miners. These machines tunnel their way underground while the battle rages above them, bypassing enemy troops and fortifications and emerging behind enemy lines. The tunnelers can also move above the ground, but that way they are really really slow and it is far more common to see them being transported to where they have to go on giant, tracked, or otherwise, transporter vehicles. The Imperial military does appreciate the value of a tunneler as an assault vehicle, for overcoming both surface defenses and subterranean strongholds. They do often deploy them in large numbers as well. Many of the tunneling vehicles used by the Imperium today were obtained, supposedly, as part of a mutual exchange of material and technology between the squad homeworlds and the Imperium sometime during the Great Crusade, or maybe even a bit earlier. Probably the most lore-rich vehicle of this kind is the Termite. Also known as the Termite Assault Drill, this is an Imperial subterranean vehicle utilized by the Adeptus Mechanicus, but not only, as an underground transport. It is supposedly the smallest of the tunneler-type vehicles. The Termite, as well as its bigger counterparts, the Mole and the Hellbore, use a phase shield generator to burrow into the ground, whereas the likes of the Hades Breaching Drill, which we're also gonna cover, uses a brute force approach applying physical drills. The Termite carries two squads of Imperial Guard troopers, and the various termites are organized into squadrons for tactical purposes. These termite squadrons all use the same tunnel, each one following behind the other and branching to the surface only at the very last moment. In a bit of a canon conflict and contradiction to what I just said, the termite was supposedly designed sometime in the 30th millennium during the Unification Wars. It was first utilized by the Legionis Astartes of the 18th Legion, the Salamanders, in the so-called Assault of the Tempest Galleries. This took place during the overthrow of the Ethnarch of the Caucasus Wastes, a despotic techno-barbarian state from the Caucasus Peninsula of the ancient European continent of Old Earth. The Salamanders utilized dozens and dozens of newly created termite subterranean boring machines, which were fitted with recently acquired technology from Mars. Once they were ready, the Legion saluted the Emperor and calmly mounted the untested Martian war machines of the Mechanicum. They would pierce the dark earth and rock at the edge of the wastes, disappearing into a deadly and unknown world, to assault the subterranean tempest galleries of the Caucasus wastes. In another notable campaign of the Horus Heresy, 
the termite played once again a decisive role in the capture of the world of Abfall Bay. It was here that the entirety of the elite First Company Templar Brethren of the Imperial Fist Legion were transported underground into the heart of the traitor stronghold by more than 50 termite vehicles, appearing behind enemy lines and causing maximum disruption. Ever since that bygone era, the Imperials continued using the termite vehicles. Rather than taking their troops across the ground or via the air, the termite burrows deep underground launched from a surface transport far behind enemy lines. It uses a combination of melta cutters, face shield generators, and huge heavy bore drills to chew through the ground beneath the foe, and emerge behind the lines or in the heart of their fortress. The termite is also armed with deadly weapons, be it a choice of bolters, volkite chargers, or heavy flamers. These can punish any nearby enemy before it disgorges its deadly cargo to bring death and ruin. Once a termite has surfaced and dispatched its payload, it is essentially immobile. The transport vehicle of a termite is unarmed. The second vehicle for today, with a bit of lore behind it, is the Hades Breaching Drill. This is a piece of industrial equipment which has been used for both civilian and military purposes by the Imperium. The Hades drill is normally used on Imperial mining worlds, to help miners dig out mining tunnels and find deposits of strategic ores and remove rubble and debris. When the Hades is used in a military role, it is normally used during a prolonged siege, where it serves as a breaching drill that can break into a bunker or through a wall of an enemy fortification. It is equipped with a forward-firing melta cutter, which can turn rock and metal into molten slag in just a few seconds. Its massive drilling blades are tipped with diamantine, and can easily cut through many materials, be it rock, metal, and even flesh. When it is deployed as a siege weapon, it can not only be used as a breaching drill, but also to attack the enemy from underground. During a prolonged siege, the engineers of the Imperial Guard can spend weeks or even months underground and sapping around and towards the enemy lines. The Hades will then be used quickly to breach the last couple of yards until it hits the surface, where the engineers and other specialist units will come through the breach and assault the enemy. Even when the drill is on the surface after breaching, it is not entirely useless. While the melta cutter and the drilling blades are capable of ripping apart enemy structures and even tanks. It can also be turned on enemy infantry and used as a makeshift tank due to its solid and armored construction. This thing is not armed with any conventional weapons, nor was it ever designed to see actual battle. But the needs of the Imperium demand that it should be used when required, even during a war. Its forward-firing melta cutter works the same way as a melta weapon, and can be used to melt armor and structures into piles of slag. The insides of a Hades consist of a conveyor belt to move the rubble and debris away from the area where the vehicle is trying to cut through. Now, unfortunately, the other burrowing vehicles that I'm gonna talk about today really don't have a lot of info on them, but I figured I should show them to you anyway. The Mole is a medium-sized tunneler vehicle used by the Adeptus Mechanicus as a subterranean transport vehicle. This one can carry up to a platoon of Imperial Guard troopers. All the Moles also carry special communication equipment, allowing them to relay orders to the troops that they carry. The Hellbore is the biggest of this family, a gigantic burrowing vehicle that is far larger than either the Mole or the Termite. Just like those do, it also uses a face shield generator to burrow deep underground with its massive drill, while being able to carry many soldiers of the Imperial armies far below the earth. Weapons-wise, it also has multi-launchers and heavy bolters. The Mantolith is another gigantic subterranean burrowing vehicle used to deliver assault squads in the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. In fact, this one is so big it has its own teleportation chamber, allowing them to deliver troops to the surface even without breaching the surface itself. One particular use of this vehicle was during the assault on the Saturnine Gate during the Siege of Terra by the Sons of Horus. And finally, the Plutona is 
pretty much the same as the Mantolith, but a bit smaller and without its own teleportation chamber. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any pictures on either the Mantolith or the Plutona. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Imperial Tunnelers slash Miners slash Subterranean Vehicles for today. Definitely an interesting bunch, in my opinion, and deserving of a bit more attention than what they got so far. Now, did you know about any of these vehicles we mentioned today? Are you a fan of the Termite or the Hades Breaching Drill? Do you know of any other vehicles of this kind that I didn't mention? To be honest, I didn't check for Xeno's variants, because at the end of the day this was an Imperial episode. Either way, do share your thoughts in the comments below, or questions if you have any. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, do click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor Protects.